Lest we forget the American dream. Looks like you are going to have quite a party, Mrs. Hawkins. Potato chips, two cans of anchovies, black olives, maraschino cherries, whipping cream. <laughs> it's my day for the bridge club, Toby. You know how women are. <laughs> I guess I do. But don't you worry. It'll be a mighty nice party, I'm sure. Quite certain you haven't forgotten anything? Coffee or bread? Oh, you'd better give me a loaf of bread, too. Dunn's. A loaf of Dunn's bread. Mm. There you are. That'll be, um... 218, Mrs. Hawkins. Could you deliver it right away, Toby? I've so much to do. Sure, sure. I'll send it right over. Here is your change. Oh, you're so obliging, Toby. It's a pleasure to trade here. Well, aim to please, Mrs. Hawkins. I like it here, and I expect to stay in business a long time. Toby, do you have a minute? I've just got to talk to you. Sure, Laura. Be right with you. Come in again, Mrs. Hawkins. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Toby, I'm so angry I could just explode. They can't do things like that. Who do they think they are? Take it easy, Laura. What's happened? Lest we forget the American dream. Another in this series of programs dedicated to you, to me, to all Americans, and the kind of America we want to live in. Today's story, One Small Voice, starring Paul Lucas. Toby, you know how badly I need a job. I owe you for the groceries, and Laura, I... Laura, owe... I've told you not to worry about that little bill. You'll pay me when you can. I know, Toby. But, but I have to get a job. And if it's going to be like that all over, I don't know what I'm going to do. What'll happen to me? Now, see here, young lady. Suppose you calm down and tell me what this is all about. Oh, all right, Toby. Last night, I saw an ad in the paper saying that Dunn's Bakery needed some girls. So I went up there this morning, filled out an application, and waited my turn. You're next, miss. Uh, sit down, miss. Uh, what is your name? Ginevri. Laura Ginevri. Oh, yes. Italian? Well, my parents came from Italy, but I'm an American. During the war, I was in the WAC, I and see. I served... I'm sorry, Miss uh, Ginevri, is that it? Yes. I don't think we have a place for you here at Dunn's. But why not? I, I understood that no experience was necessary, and my references are good. I need the job. I'll work hard. I'm sure you would, miss, but we have rather a peculiar situation here. We employ several hundred people, and we can't afford to take chances. Chances? I don't understand. Well, the girls object to working with... Uh, the fact of the matter is, Miss Ginevri, we don't employ certain nationality groups. <laughs> That's what he said, Toby. They hire lots of other girls, even girls from this neighborhood. Helen Warren, Jane Barstow. But just because I have a foreign-sounding name, I don't get a chance. They can't do that, can they, Toby? You listen to her and you don't know what to say. You know about things like this. They happened to you when you first came to America so many years ago. But this girl was born in America. You watch her grow up. She spent 18 months in the army, overseas. And now Dunn's Bakery says to her, it's tough, Miss Ginevri, but there's no place for you anymore. You served your country, sure, thanks, but that's all over now. We can't do a thing for you. <laughs> Toby, you're not saying anything. Laura, now, you, you listen to me. Things like this happen sometimes, but... Don't you worry about it. You'll get a job. I know you will. But suppose it happens again, Toby, and again. Now, don't be silly, Laura. Everyone doesn't feel that way. You just keep on looking. All day you can't get Laura out of your mind. And who does Dunn's Bakery think it is anyway? Huh? <laughs> well, that's a funny question. Just the biggest bakery in town, that's all. And William Dunn is a prominent citizen. Always you see his picture in the paper. What can you do about it? 
You are just one person. One person in a little neighborhood grocery store. You wait on the customers who come in, but your mind isn't on it. Toby, you've given me ground coffee. I asked for drip. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Collins. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention, I guess. Well, I'm sorry, I can't use it. Well, I'll fix it right away, Mrs. Collins. That's the way it goes. You keep making mistakes. Your mind's on Dunn Bakery and Laura. And then suddenly you are wondering why you are making it your business. You don't act that way. As far as you are concerned, a person's nationality or his religion or his color has always been his own affair. Everyone is welcome in your store. And you'd like to forget the whole affair. But you keep seeing Laura's face in front of you. Well, how's the grocery business today, Toby? What? Oh, hello, Mr. Granger. I didn't hear you come in. Even with that bell clanging, you're getting old, Toby. Deaf, more than likely. <laughs> well, how is the newspaper? I see you have your own byline now. Do you like what I'm writing? Oh, sure. Stories about people are always good. What have you had today, Mr. Granger? Uh, let's see. The missus gave me a list. A um, couple of cans of peas, head of lettuce. And it better be firm. Ah, uh, it will be. Don't worry. <laughs> Quart of milk. Uh, oh, yes. A loaf of Dunn's bread. Dunn's bread, right. Say, wait a minute. I've got it. Oh, good. I'll take it. Dunn's bread. That's it. That's what I can do. What are you talking about, Toby? Look, Mr. Granger, you've lived in this neighborhood a long time. What kind of people live here? Well, just about every kind, I guess. Why? Well, that's right. Irish, Hungarians, Italians, Jews, a few Negroes, and two Chinese. Don't forget the two Wong brothers and the laundry down the block. Mm -hmm. And all of them buy Dunn's bread. Okay, huh? but uh, look, Toby, all I asked you for was a loaf of bread. Mr. Granger, I'm not selling Dunn's bread anymore. But look, there's a stack of it on your shelf. Sure, and it's going to stay there. Why? Because Mr. Dunn says that Sure, everybody can eat his bread, but not everybody is good enough to make it. At least the Italians aren't, or the Catholics, or who knows who else. Well, I guess Mr. Dunn and me feel differently about things. I say that if they are not good enough to make it, they are too good to eat it. Toby, what brought this on? Laura Ginevri, you know her. Dunn's turned her down on a job. They didn't like her name. Now, what's wrong with a name like Ginevri? I'm afraid you'll only be hurting yourself, Toby, not selling Dunn's bread. That's all right with me, Mr. Granger. Say, why don't you write the piece in the paper about it? Really go after Dunn's. He oughtn't to be able to get away with it. Who does he think he is? Uh, Laura Ginevri lives over at 223, doesn't she? Sure. Sh say, where are you going? You forgot your groceries. Uh, have Johnny deliver them, will you, Toby? Put in a loaf of bread, too, and I don't mean Dunn's. I've got some work to do. <laughs> You meant what you said. You don't know whether it will help or not, but you feel good about it. In the morning, you tell Dunn's driver he can stop bringing bread around. You are not having any more. You send out the first deliveries and set about getting things in order. Toby! Hey, Toby, did you see the morning papers? No, Laura. Got it right here, but haven't had a chance to read it. Well, let me show it to you. Look. Look, here on page three. It's about you. About me? <laughs> What did I do? Let me see. No, no, I'm going to read it to you. It's called One Small Voice. And it says, there's a man in this town who isn't very important, as we usually understand importance. He runs a small neighborhood grocery store. He doesn't have much influence either, just one vote. But he's a man, and more important, he's an American. When he heard of something he felt was wrong, he didn't close his eyes or his heart to it. He did something about it. Tobias Walter, his name is, and everyone calls him Toby. Now, Laura, you're making it up. It doesn't say that at all. Oh, but it does, Toby. Look. Well, what do you know? Hey, I got my name in the paper. First time, too. But Mr. Granger wasn't supposed to write about me. He was supposed to write about Dunn's Bakery. Oh, that comes later. But look, Toby, I had three offers of jobs. You have, Laura? Why, that's wonderful. When did it happen? Well, my telephone's been ringing all morning. That's why I couldn't get over here any sooner. 
And I owe it all to you, Toby. You look at her and you don't know what to say. Three job offers. That's good. That's very good. You are just one person, but you did accomplish something. Three job offers. That means that you are not alone. That other people in your town feel as you do about unfairness. And then when Laura's gone and people come in to do their shopping, every one of them has something to say. And people you've never seen before come in to buy groceries from you. And then about noon, the telephone rings. Hello, Toby's Grocery. That you, Mr. Waller? That's right. Who is this? This is William Dunn of Dunn's Bakery. Oh. Um, um, Hello, Mr. Dunn. What can I do for you? Uh, about that article in the paper this morning, would you ask that Laura Ginevry to get in touch with me? Maybe, but uh, what do you want with her, Mr. Dunn? I have a job for her. Tell her to come right up here and I'll personally see that she's hired. Well, you are too late, Mr. Dunn. She already has a job. Three jobs, as a matter of fact. She has? Well, that's fine. I guess that closes the matter, doesn't it? Closes it? Well, I don't know what you mean. Well, now that she has a job, I just took it for granted that she... Now, you take too much for granted, Mr. Dunn. This is bigger than Laura Ginevry. What about all the other people you are going to turn away from the same reason you said no to Laura? What about them, Mr. Dunn? Well, I hardly thought that we... Might be a good idea to start thinking, Mr. Dunn. In this country, if people are good enough to buy your bread, they are good enough to make it. Think about that. And when you've got the right answer, let me know, and I'll be glad to do business with you again. Goodbye, Mr. Dunn. Morning, Toby. Oh, hello, Mr. Granger. Say, uh, thanks for that write-up in the paper yesterday. Say, Laura's got a job, you know. Yes, yes, she told me. Um, I've got some news for you, too. Really? Really? What kind of news? The paper just got a call from Dunn's Bakery. Know what Mr. Dunn said? No, I I can't imagine. Since people of every race, color, and creed in this city are consumers of Dunn's bread, none who are qualified will be barred from employment at Dunn's Bakery. How's that? He really said that? Well, uh, that's, that's wonderful, isn't it? I'm writing a story on it, Toby, and a photographer will be down here in a little while to take a picture of you. You mean for the newspapers? Nah, you can't do that. I never had my picture in the paper in my whole life. Well, it's about time, don't you think? Sure enough, they take your picture, and when the paper comes out the next day, there you are, right on the front page, and there is a big story in it, all about you. Now, you read it, and you learn something very important. You learn that a man's voice may be small, but if he speaks out, his voice carries far. And you wish that other people would learn this and would speak up against the things they do they don't like, against prejudice and intolerance, for instance, so that every American, regardless of his name, the church he goes to, or the color of his skin, can get an equal break. That's the American dream. And you know it can come through. Whenever enough people want it to come through. The Institute for Democratic Education has brought you another in its series, Lest We Forget the American Dream. Today's story starred Paul Lucas. Listen in again next week for another in this series dedicated to you, to me, to all Americans, and the kind of America we want to live in. Not tomorrow, but today.